Um, I just think because of how cricket is in India as a religion of sorts, um, it took quite a bit of getting used to. So yeah. at the beginning of the World Cup, um, I was filming Chris being mobbed in the airports and just like, wow, that's crazy. And then by the end of the World Cup, after the four sixes, I then going into my first thing with Delhi about four days later. It was happening to me. Hi, Carlos. How's How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good myself. Uh, how are you doing at this time? Are you in lockdown? Yeah, everywhere is in lockdown. Um, yeah, so in Oxford in the UK with my wife, uh, Nala. Um, we have a small garden which kind of gives us a little bit of outside every now and then. Um, so yeah, it's not been too, too bad, man. Me personally, I'm a homebody, so hasn't oh, been affecting okay. me too much. Uh -huh. And uh, you, you said you were in England. How long have you been there for? Um, so I left PSL um, a bit early because of coronavirus and I've been here ever since. Um, so majority uh -huh. of my family is in Barbados, but my wife would have been here um, on her own. So I decided to stay with her, stay with the dog and enjoy each other's company. Oh, well, it's a great time to uh, spend time with family at the moment. So, I mean, everyone has to look at the silver lining in this situation. And it's great that we can spend time with our families and our, and our dogs as well. And uh, I would like to thank you from uh, everywhere, uh, from Dogspot and from people in India for joining us. You, are, I know, are a very busy man. And thanks for taking the time. Uh, thanks even for having though, me. You are, I, even though you are in lockdown right now, uh, I'm sure you are keeping yourself very busy. And maybe you can speak a little bit about how you uh, spend some time. So let me try to get... So just viewers beware. Nala is, Nala is very, very antisocial. So I'm trying to bribe her slightly with some ham and some cheese. Um, but she's very, very independent. So she'll be out of my hand in a jiffy, I can bet. Um, personally, I bought some weights and stuff. Um, so I've been on a, a fitness journey of sorts for the last 12 to 18 months or so. Um, uh -huh. So I didn't want the coronavirus lockdowns to impact that. As you can see, I'm sweating. I was just in the garden playing a little football with myself and annoying my wife. Um, so yeah, just trying to stay as active as possible. Um, we walk Nala once a day. So okay. we try to get out. There's a field close by. We walk to the field, walk two or three laps. Um, I try to do some sprints with her because she's very, very energetic, very, very quick runner. Um, and yeah, so that's been my exercise plus some weights for like half hour, 45 minutes, start hour every morning. Um, so yeah, okay. just making the most of a bad situation. Uh, can you tell us how old uh, Nala is? Nala is one year, three or four months. I'm bad with... Um, with, with ages and dates and stuff um but yeah we got it just before the world cup last year okay. um so yeah about a year and four months uh-huh there's nala doesn't travel with you she stays in england yeah she stays in england um uh -huh. and during the world cup we had a hectic schedule so we didn't feel right bringing her um everywhere we were going um, uh -huh. So she got into quite a routine with her dog walkers. So my wife is an NHS worker. Uh -huh. um, so she works um, eight to four, I think. So she's gone majority of the day. So the reason we actually got a Shiba Inu, and her breed is uh -huh. Japanese Shiba Inu. Um, yes. So it's like a miniature Husky, Akita, that, uh -huh. that line of um, breed. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason we got, it, got this breed is because we needed a dog that would be okay on its own. Uh -huh. um, we didn't want to get a dog just because it was a nice looking dog or just because it was one of the breeds that we'd liked. And then it was going nuts in the home, in the house alone because um, it isn't good on its own. Um, uh -huh. And we read a lot of reviews on Shiba Inus, um, very independent, which is why she leaves whenever there's no food around. <laughs> um, <laughs> But they're also very good on their own. Actually, they prefer to be on their own most times. So we, well, I'm not always in England, as you know, if I'm traveling to play cricket, but my wife is here majority of the time. So she leaves from home knowing that while she's away from work, uh, away at work, that Nala wouldn't be pulling her hair out figuratively um, and that she's good 
and she's happy, really and truly. We are probably, um, the quarantine is probably worse for her than it is for us because she's seeing us too often, no? <laughs> yes, she does. Um, she's definitely very happy to be have you around with her all the time now. Um, I'm not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> she like she likes her quiet. Um, so we find out she, so she had a bed. I don't know if I could uh-huh. show the screen right. So she had a bed. This is where she was from a baby. Um, uh-huh. We've had to install like a little camera so my wife could monitor her ever so often. Uh-huh. Um, but she, so when my wife traveled with me, she went to daycare. Um, where she'd be there day, day on day um, and there were a few dogs there as well so she really realized that she's very good socially with other dogs okay. so once she's with other dogs she's fantastic um, very energetic but once she's alone she wants just peace and quiet and uh-huh. they introduced her to the couch and that is why our couch is now a mess um, so <laughs> loads of blankets to stop the fur um, and yeah I a million times showing you my couch right now. My couch is actually owned by my dogs. Uh, they <laughs> let me borrow it. So I feel what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I know the feeling. We've had a few friends over and our coach is a pull-up coach. And yeah, they got some mean looks from her when they tried to pull the coach. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, you're on my turf type of thing. Uh, well, it's uh, very generous of her to let your friend use their couch. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's graduated now from the couch to our bed. Oh wow! Yeah. So anytime, anytime we, anytime we have the bedroom door open, um, <laughs> she's straight in, and yeah, actually, if we get up from the couch and go in the direction of the bedroom, she's like up, looking to see. Okay, the first stop is the bathroom. Normally, you brush your teeth, get your, your <laughs> face mask on or whatever, and you go to bed, um, and then she's up. And if you ever go in the direction of the bedroom after the bathroom. She's off the coach and straight to the bedroom trying to get on the bed. Uh, uh, yeah, they're, very, they're super smart. They're smart dogs. Uh, my my parents actually have a Japanese Akita. So they're very uh-huh. similar. So, uh, so, they have, so they, they're very uh, independent dogs. They don't need a lot of supervision. I mean, every dog needs a little bit of supervision, but they don't need so much of uh, hand-holding as maybe some other dogs require. Mm-hmm. So you're absolutely correct in that, uh, when you say that. Can you tell us, because some of our viewers have asked us, how come you named her Nala? I mean, can you talk, talk a little bit about that? Um, so that was, my, that was all my wife's doing, to be honest. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was from Lion King. Um, I think it's Simba oh, and Nala. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. she was going to be our little princess. I think Nala was a princess on Lion King. Um, so yeah, and the name was nice. Like it was short, easy to call. Um, so not too much in depth thinking. She came up with it, and I was like, "Cool, roll with it." And I actually really, really like it. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's a fantastic name. I think a lot of our viewers are very happy. Nala has her own Instagram handle, I believe. Yes. Uh, and uh, yes, again, do you know what? Can you tell us what it is? Nala dot Brathwaite. So N A L A dot B R A T H W A I T E. Um and we had we'll have we someone put that thing. Ah Get perfect. Ready. We had a we did something with We Exist as well. Um where uh-huh. we brought um dog owners around the world just to share a bit about themselves, about their dog. Um and yeah, that I mean that's why we, we created the Instagram for her. Um, because we want to be able to impact other people and other dog owners, obviously with my name through cricket, um, with how gorgeous she is as well. Um, you know, to be able to do charitable stuff like that. And yeah. I like the word give back because I feel cricket has done a lot for me. India as a country has done a lot for me. Um, uh-huh. exposure wise. Because you're very popular yeah. over here. You're very, very yeah. popular, especially after what you did about two, three years ago in, uh, in Calcutta. Uh, so uh, you're very famous here for that and you have a huge following I believe yeah so I mean as best as I can use that following to impact people and you know like there are some people who I love dogs um, uh-huh. a little scared of the big ones I'd be honest but <laughs> I love dogs I've had dogs from the time I was very young um, uh-huh. if my dad was here he'd tell you a story about me taking a straight up um, putting it in my bike and taking it to school um, oh, wow. having it in the desk pocket 
you know, yeah. we put in the books and stuff and taking it out after every period to make sure it's fed and that sort of stuff. And I, I, apparently it was a neighbor's dog. So I've always had dogs. But for me now, it's how can I impact other people that loves do love dogs as much as I do and maybe even love them more. There are a lot of uh, stray dogs in India and all around the world. And, uh -huh. you know, these dogs really and truly are our little friends. So yes. I, mean, I was very happy to be able to collaborate with We Exist. And we are looking for some more collaborations where we can help impact other dog owners and dogs in particular, yes. because it's okay to talk about dog owners, but then there's a whole other set of dogs that are on the roads and they're fighting for survival just as the way we fight for homeless people, we used to fight for homeless dogs as well. So mm -hmm. let's see what how Nala's pretty face can impact some dogs that she's never met. Well, uh, we we really appreciate your what you're saying, uh, Carlos. We have a lot of strays on the road, and a lot of people, and a, a lot of them need help, especially right now since uh, a lot of their food sources have been taken away because the governments have obviously had to shut down all the eateries that they haunt, you know, on the road where they live, they're usually next to a restaurant. And uh, it's, it's a fantastic thing what you just said. So it's, it's a shout out to you for saying something like that and bringing their plight to, uh, to this uh, platform. Uh, we really appreciate it. And anybody can help a little bit is always appreciated. We have a lot of NGOs who are doing a lot of, trying to do a lot of work under severe restrictions. So I really implore you, I will send you a couple of links offline. This is not the platform to do it right now, but I will send it to you. Please do check it out. And a lot of our, uh, a lot of our followers know these platforms as well. And all, uh, for all of our viewers, please go follow uh, Carlos's account. It's actually under his uh, pet name, which is uh, Ricky, I believe, Ricardo is yes. your pet name. Uh, would you? Uh, how do you prefer to be uh, uh, addressed, Ricky or Carlos? Um, it really doesn't matter. Um, so Ricky, my middle name is Ricardo, and at uh, home in Barbados, we call everyone by a version of their middle name. So okay. everyone calls me Ricky at home. Um, okay. But the reason I started putting it on my shirt is because my god, kids started calling me Uncle Ricky, and Uncle they used Ricky. to come to some of the games and some of the stuff. So I say, you know what? As a tribute to them in a way. Let me try uh -huh. to put my name on, and then it just took off from there. So, yeah. Um, on the topic of NGOs, um, I started Project Ricky. Um, <laughs> so it was very tailored towards cancer. Um, go check the Instagram out. Um, Project Ricky is the handle on Instagram as well. Um, so for the last year or so, it's very, very cancer-focused because my mom um, is a survivor of breast cancer. And I okay. wanted to push all my efforts into um, not only raising awareness, but telling the stories of persons affected by cancer. So we've had two or three really good campaigns. Um, but you never know, Project Ricky may um, try to tie it with an NGO and do something for dogs, homeless dogs, sick dogs. Um, but yeah, I mean, there are a lot of people on the live now, um, about 60 odd. And I'm sure some of you guys would have some um, information on how we can do a bit more for dogs, rather yes. homeless, rather sick in India and across the world. So feel free to um, to message Idanala, Project Ricky. Most of my messages get lost in the message requests. So I wouldn't say to message me because you probably would get lost. Yeah, but for sure, man, shout out Nala. Um, follow and message Project Ricky and let's try to have a positive influence on the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, there you go. have it, guys. Uh, 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 Carlos is asking you guys to do. He's happy to help out. He ha he's running a, uh, supervising, running an NGO for cancer, which is Project Ricky Foundation. Yeah, please go check out that page. Uh, uh, also subscribe to it. Please follow it. Uh, Carlos, this is actually going live on YouTube as well. Uh, sorry, oh. uh, Facebook as well. And we have a lot of followers there. So we and this will be on our channel. So a lot of people are going to watch it because you are a superstar, and everybody will want to see this. Uh, and uh, they'll be happy to collaborate with you. And uh, we will do what we can. And you're a fantastic human being for suggesting something like that. You guys, please go ahead and check this. Uh, check these accounts out and help Carlos out in his endeavor right now. Carlos, uh, you know, you were a very busy man. Tell us how, you, you also spoke a little bit about Nala being very well, uh, doing well with other dogs. In my experience, uh, Akita's and uh, Shiva Inu's uh, don't have that uh, reputation. How have you managed to uh, keep her friendly with other dogs? 
Um, I would probably give credit to our dog walkers. Our dog walkers are amazing. Firstly, let me say that. Um, and as I mentioned, because we had her just before the World Cup and because she was so young, um, uh -huh. she was in a social setting a lot earlier. So uh -huh. it was almost second nature to her as she grew. She grew with a set of dogs. She grew walking with three, four, five, sometimes 10 dogs for hour, two hours a day. So that's all okay. she's ever known. Um, okay. So I would say early social socialization is a plus. And since then, we've been on a few trips with the dog walkers, walking through the park up and down. They're very social. Um, and we see dogs who were walking with the owners uh -huh. who then get into contact with the dog walkers. And you okay. can see like kind of a frosty reception first up because the dog isn't <laughs> accustomed to um, yes. being with other dogs. But uh -huh. if you go back on that walk within a month's time, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, whatever, that uh -huh. dog is now a friend of all the other dogs. Yeah. So the earlier you can get the dogs to socialize with other dogs, then the easier it is for them to be okay around other dogs and not snap and snarl. Um, and it, it, it becomes like a little clique. So funny enough, earlier today, um, Nala was looking through the window and we saw one of the dogs and his owner walking down the road. Uh -huh. But we rushed, we rushed outside, got the harness on because she isn't good with recallers yet, um, and took her out. And they were frolicking for like a good 10, 15 minutes. Uh -huh. And then, yeah, she just came back in and sat down. So having a chat with the owner, one of the dogs is in heat. And this dog that she absolutely loves is a tall, black cane corsa. Yeah. And no dog can come in the circle of friends that he protects. And he's a male, yeah. very alpha. Um, so they've actually had to stop him from walking with the other dogs. So it's like, just as humans break, make a bond, so does dogs. So get them socializing as early as possible. And uh, are you friends with the King Corso? Because the King Corso has a reputation that precedes it as well. So uh, you did say, you know, we, uh, you stay away from slightly larger dogs. So. Yeah, so I, I, I'm good enough with him that I can be in the same space and not be absolutely terrified, but I still uh -huh. keep an eye on him. I still keep an eye on him for sure. <laughs> so uh, can you tell, talk to us a little bit about your daily schedule with Nala? Like what time do you get up? Do you, what time is her exercise? Besides, let's say what the dog walker does, uh, um, how do you interact with Nala? Nala's very, very lazy. As you can see, during the live, Nala's facial expression has not changed. Um, <laughs> so on mornings, um, we wake up, we get out of bed, we have to usher her off the bed, up we uh -huh. get, get Nala. Um, once she comes outside, it's on her spot on the couch. Um, yeah. The dog walkers normally come around 11.30 or so. So she knows uh -huh. that. And from uh -huh. 11 o'clock, she's listening to see if the car is coming, if the door is shut, if the doorbell is ringing. And you can see like she's all on top, the, um, the couch waiting, tail wagging. So then she goes out for hours, sometimes two, comes back. Um, we put some food for her in the morning. She doesn't really eat on mornings. Um, yeah. She'll have a little nibble after her walk, drink some water. Then we put some dinner for her around 7, 7.30. Um, okay. Again, she won't eat right away. But she always gets up after midnight, that sort of thing, and come uh -huh. down. She'll eat, probably go in the garden and play for a bit, um, and then come back to bed. So oh. sleep, play. Sleep, <laughs> play. <laughs> yes. Yes, yeah, she's, uh, she's a lucky dog, and uh, you're lucky to have her also because she's such a beautiful dog. And yes, she yes. seems to, I, you know, honestly, you were saying that she's going to run off, but she seems to really be enjoying spending this time with you. And she's been in your lap and... Uh, I think it's because the food is close. <laughs> yeah. What uh, what kind? I I know you have this, but are you do you like? Uh, you know, we've had a lot of uh, trainers who have come on our uh, uh, on our channel. Uh, do you have someone who besides the dog walker? Do you work with someone, or do you interact? And do you, uh, is there something that to you do with Nala to stimulate her mentally every day? Um, we try to play with her, so she has a million toys. Um, okay. She likes the toys that she can destroy. So if there's a toy that she can pull apart, then mm -hmm. she loves that. That's probably one of her favorite toys. Um, if it squeaks, but there are some toys we are releasing that squeaks when, so she bites it, nothing happens. And then when uh -huh. she lets go, it squeaks. So it kind of confuses uh -huh. her a bit. 
but the ones that when she bites them, it squeaks, capture, captures her attention a lot more. Um, uh -huh. She has a bullhorn that she's had for the last year, is about halfway down now, so that keeps her entertained. And just recently, she's found, hold up, baby. She's found one of my cricket balls. And she's taken a look <laughs> into that as well. Oh, uh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's going to swing in a particular way. <laughs> the way she's dealt with it, I don't know if it'll swing at all. Um, <laughs> but we did work with a behavioral therapist. Uh -huh, um, okay. Because she's very, she's very timid. Um, okay. So walking on the road and stuff, buses passing, cars passing, and she sees a bin. Um, she's like very, very scared and very, very on edge. So it's just a few things that we're working on um, with the behavioral therapist about that sort of stuff. But then we have also went on Facebook and followed a few Shiba Inu pages as well and realized that that's par for the course for the breed. Um, yes. They're just very, very timid, very on edge. Apparently yes. they're a, hunt a hunting breed. So they're always very aware of their surroundings, always wanting to know that there's an escape route. So her being on the lead and her being off the lead are completely two different dogs. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I think that kind of settled in our mind a bit that she doesn't hate us. It's just her breed. Um, but she's getting better and better as time goes on. And um, the behavioral therapist said when she gets about two, three, the recall will be much, much easier. Um, uh -huh. So until then, it's a lottery if we can let her off the lead in the park or not. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, uh, my folks, when they got the Akita, they, uh, they got an Akita in 1996. And they mm. used to tell me that uh, the Akita Inu used to be used on the peripheries of the Japanese villages and the towns. And they were there to keep the bears away. Uh, that's uh, the story that was told to me. Now, I don't know how much of that is true or not, but uh, they do well in a pack. But mm. uh, as, as you already know, that they are... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, they they're quite aloof with other people. They're mm -hmm. not like the friendliest of dogs with other people. But it's a fantastic breed. Uh, uh, Carlos, do you want to answer some of the questions that are coming? We have somebody who seems to be a friend of yours. Uh, I think you may know him. His name is Yuzi Chahar. I think ah. he is a little bit of cricket himself. Uh, he's wondering <laughs> when you're going to be coming back to India, uh, and things are waiting for you over here. You want to address that question? Uzi, you need to fly me over, my brother. Um, can't wait to get back in India, to be honest. Um, I've always enjoyed my time there. Um, obviously, a few good memories, as you could all remember. Um, and yeah, man, India is a fantastic place. Hopefully, when I get back there, we can um, go visit a dog shelter or something and interact with a few dogs. Uzi, when I'm in Bangalore, it's up to you to take care of me, my brother. <laughs> so what is your favorite uh, city in India when you come here? Um, for partying, Bangalore. Um, wow. Memories, obviously, Kolkata. Uh -huh. um, and I think my wife really likes Mumbai. So once she's there, happy wife, happy life. <laughs> happy to be in Mumbai. Uh, I am from Delhi. Uh, you haven't spent a lot of time in Delhi, have you? No, I have. I played for the Daredevils for two years. Um, okay. Again, the pollution just gets me, man. The deli belly. Mm. The only thing it's good for is weight loss, but <laughs> I don't know, that, <laughs> a week or so of pain isn't, isn't the nicest. Yeah, well, you know, you'll be surprised. We have some of the lowest pollution in the history of India for the longest time right now. So when you can come and spend some time in Delhi, even though our pollution used to be quite bad before, now mm -hmm. it's actually getting much better. And hopefully That's we good. can learn lessons from what has actually happened right now. When I was, when I was, when I was there, they had the odd and even. Yes. Um, oh. did, they <laughs> did they persist with that? And did that make a difference? Uh, I think uh, it, the, the jury is out on that. It, uh, mm. I think the chief minister, uh, it was uh, the right initiative. Uh, mm. it, it hit certain problems, but I think uh, it, he, he had his uh, heart in the right place. Uh, and I think it would make a little bit of uh, a difference. But there were other combinations and other factors that were uh, contributing to that at that time. Okay. And it was too small a uh, thing. It was only for 15 days when he did it. I think you were here uh, when it was for 15 days of a yeah. month, for one month. So we needed to do it a little longer. A lot of people are doing the hashtag remember the name. You were famous for that. That is your hashtag. Uh, remember the name. And please go uh, guys search for that. You will see uh, uh, Carlos over and obviously the video. It is gone viral and it's huge. You're, you're so big because of that. 
Yeah, you want to uh, talk a little bit about? Oh, oh, we have some more questions before we do that. Are you going to plan to get more dogs? Well, our flat is—I don't want to say tiny. It's small, so <laughs> we can't get another dog, especially a big one, because uh -huh. it wouldn't have the space to like, get the energy burnt off. Um, if uh -huh. we do move though, sometime soon, and have a bigger garden and more room, then yes, uh -huh. we, because we thought about it because of how good Nala is with other dogs. We were thinking if we can find uh -huh. another dog that would stimulate her during the day so that while my wife is away, she wouldn't just be sleeping and she'd actually have someone to play, well, a dog to play with, then uh -huh. we, would, we would be interested. But we don't want to bring it just because we want to bring it or just because Nala wants another dog and then that dog isn't treated the way it should be either. So uh -huh. a bit in limbo. Circumstances would dictate. Uh, Meher is telling you to get another Shiba Inu. Uh, maybe... <laughs> I don't. I don't know if Nala would love that. We've met. We've met some Siberian, Siberian Shiba Inus or Siberian Huskies, something like that, uh -huh. on our walks when we went to Birmingham. And okay. Yeah. So we have uh, we have a viewer who is asking us how come you chose uh, because I mean I think you answered that but she must have come slightly later. How mm -hmm. come you bought a Shiba Inu? Uh, it's because it's such an unusual breed. Is it common in England uh, to see a Shiba Inu? Um, not really. More so Huskies. Um, yeah. So we have a Husky that goes on a walk with her. As I told him, I saw a few in Birmingham. Um, ah. But it was just about finding a, a breed that can fit to our lifestyle. That whilst we have our um, want, per se, of having a dog, caring for a dog, feeling the love felt when you have a dog. We also want to do right by that dog. So um, we wanted to find a breed that can do well in flats, as I mentioned earlier. And yeah, we did a lot of research. It was about two or three months of research. Um, and yeah, we realized, well, actually, my wife wanted a cat. And we realized that this is the closest thing to a cat, a Shiba Inu. Um, very good, very independent. Does uh, she get along? Do you guys have cats? Do you have cats in your neighborhood? No. We have, no, we have one big one that walks across the top of the, the, um, the fence. Uh -huh. um, but that's it. And we had, we had um, one or two hedgehogs. So now they hardly bark uh -huh. as well. Um, but one night we heard her barking incessantly and we were like, why is she barking? We looked outside and there was a massive hedgehog and we we're just like, go on, Nala. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she, you, I mean, she's not having to, uh, uh, an opportunity to interact with any cats yet, right? Yes, she has. And she didn't come up the way oh, okay. on that occasion. So she spent this Christmas by my wife's uncles, uh, well, mm -hmm. uncles and uncle and his family. Um, and their cat is let's say not nice um so on, <laughs> i think on the third third day before she left um they got into it a bit um and the family had the cameras there because she gets a lot of love wherever she goes so the cat was okay. feeling a little jealous and yeah she took a few blows thankfully they didn't leave a mark but yeah she <laughs> lost her first battle well i mean she must have lost the battle but the war is on so <laughs> <laughs> but it's good it's good because you know uh, for me personally my dog uh, I'm trying to socialize my dog he's sleeping over there in the corner right now mm -hmm. and I'm trying to socialize him with uh, with a cat because I want him to get along so he <laughs> is always looking he's never bitten or he's never gotten after anything he's never been able to catch a cat but we're trying very hard uh, my wife and I to uh, keep the dog uh, because we have cats in the neighborhood they keep uh, jumping mm -hmm. on around, all around we don't, we don't want him to get too uh, excited about that. Uh, you know, uh, uh, some of our viewers did ask you about how you got Nala and why you got a Nikita. Mm -hmm. uh, you did mention that you had experiences with dogs before. And uh, uh, a Kita Inu or a, uh, or a Shiba Inu in your case is, uh, is a, a breed which is, uh, I think, is, uh, comes with a lot of responsibility. And you seem to be someone who has uh, done a lot of, uh, has a lot of responsibility. You've done the research, you know the breed. Uh, and that's something before, you know, because a lot of our uh, viewers are big fans of yours. Mm -hmm. And so it, uh, yeah, even though you have this breed, it's a beautiful breed. It's a fantastic breed. Uh, but guys, 
uh, it takes a little bit of experience to keep a breed like uh, like the one that uh, Carlos has. It's a Shiba Inu. So guys, do your research before you see this and you want to get yourself a Shiba Inu. Please guys, do your research and know how to take care of dogs uh, before you do this. It's not an easy breed to keep as Carlos knows. He puts in a lot of work behind his dog. He, uh, he, the, uh, Nala has a proper schedule. We have people who are missing you in Kolkata. Rajdeep says he misses you in Kolkata. Uh, I miss Kolkata, have... my brother. <laughs> so can you tell us, you know, we are, we are taking a lot of your time and I know you have stuff to do today. Tell me, uh, before we let you go, some stuff about your experiences in India and uh, how is it different from, let's say, West Indies or maybe, and how is that different from where you are right now in England? Um, I just think because of how cricket is in India, as a religion of sorts, um, it took quite a bit of getting used to. So yeah. at the beginning of the World Cup, um, I was filming Chris being mobbed in the airports and just like, wow, that's crazy. And then by the end of the World Cup, after the four sixes, I then going into my first stint with Delhi about four days later. It was happening to me. So it was quite uh -huh. surreal. And I found it tough to handle for the entire first season um, and I fortunately had guys like JP Dumini and Ranta here um, the wall my idol um, Raul Dravid was the coach at that time so these guys handled it so well and it kind of gave me a blueprint um, I'm not quite to their standards of Zen as yet um, but yeah it's about accepting you know it's a religion in India um, and you're yeah. tasked with trying to put your talents on that stage and, you know, bring joy to millions of hearts. And when they see you, that's the way that they'll react. Um, whereas in the Caribbean, you walk down the road and it's just like any other normal person. Um, in England, because I'm in Oxford, which isn't a big cricketing town, um, much people wouldn't know who I am. Fortunately, there's a big black diaspora here, big Caribbean um, thing in Oxford. So I've met a few people or past people on the street who like, do you play cricket? Da, 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 because they see me play for West Indies or whatever. Um, so it's a bit of a shift. Um, but, you know, you have to give thanks. You have to appreciate where you are and appreciate um, the things that you're getting through what you have done and what uh -huh. the Lord has blessed you with. So once upon a time, it was a chore. Now I kind of accept it a bit more and find better ways of dealing with um, the requests for photos and stuff. Yeah. Do you miss, uh, your, you, you said this is your house in England, but do you mm. miss Barbados a lot? Yeah. Do you get to travel there quite often? Yeah, so in Barbados is more friends and um, my mom, my dad is there. My sister's off um, at university now, but she's back home because of coronavirus. So when I'm home, it's more um, immediate family and close friends and catching up and doing stuff together. Whereas when I'm in England, I'm house husband, Mr. Responsible. Um, so it's within within one life, there's two different roles, whether I'm in Barbados or whether I'm in England. Well, you know, it's a very good uh, for all of our viewers to get such an uh, uh, everyday image or, or a, a picture into your life right now, and they really appreciate it. We really appreciate it. And uh, we can see that you really like your dog and you love, uh, uh, love her so much. And it's, it's great to know. Can you, you know, you did speak a little bit about your teammates uh, and how they interact. Do, do they know Nala? Have they met Nala? Or do they have their own dogs? Yeah, so um, I know Jofra and CJ has been asking me, Chris Jordan and Jofra Archer have been asking me to bring Nala down to interact with um, Chris's dog. Jofra's uh -huh. now um, sent his dog back home to Barbados with his other dogs. Um, and then there's a coach, Rion Griffith, who you've met Nala in the World Cup. He absolutely loves her up to earlier this week. He messaged uh -huh. me to ask me how she was doing. He has some dogs as well. Kimar Roach has some dogs. Obviously, you guys will see Shriaz Aya with his dog. Yeah, Nala's gone. Um, <laughs> Bye, Nala. <laughs> you will see Shriaz Aya with his dogs. Um, so, yeah, there are a few cricketers with dogs. Um uh -huh. And we regularly have a chat about, you know, what type of what um, type of stuff does your dog do? What type of food does it eat? And yeah. that's our stuff. And it differs. So in England, obviously, um, like so, Nala has a raw food diet. Um, yeah. We just found that um, 
this oatly raw food when she was on dry food just normal stuff um her poo was quite soft um, yeah. so my wife did some research and she's got her on a a, um, a raw food diet now and we found yeah. that is firm that her poo a bit um she's less gassy which is fantastic um, yeah. and yeah so it's just supposed to be a lot healthier and then but you'll find in Barbados the dogs are given like leftover food and scraps sometimes if they're young you won't get them a little more aggressive they'll be fed raw meat that sort of stuff so it just varies from place to place um but yeah majority of the boys treat the dogs well absolutely love and care for them um yeah. so it's always a pleasure so we have uh, you know uh, we had a lot of nutritionists on the on the channel and they spoke a lot very highly about uh, about the raw food diet it, it's a bit difficult to source it correctly in india because uh, you have to be very careful about the sources yeah. i think it's slightly easier in let's say like england uh, yeah. to uh, to indulge a dog with that and i think that is a very good uh, i believe in that i unfortunately we can't do that especially in this situation right now uh about uh, onala is back <laughs> she's <There's happy>. food. <laughs> so tell me you know i see, i'm seeing you do this uh, are you guilty of uh, uh, of table scraps the way uh, do you uh, does she beg you for food on uh, when you're eating yeah so i always thought i'd be this um bad cop parent um but i'm so <laughs> so soft so <laughs> my wife never allows her to eat from her plate or from her hand when she's eating just because uh -huh. we don't want to get her in the habit of sitting on the couch and then asking other people uh -huh. for food when they come um but uh -huh. yeah every time we sit down to eat she knows yeah. she'll get something something uh, well i can see that uh, uh, that uh, she has you wrapped around her little paw <laughs> <laughs> all dogs do that you know i'm going to just take a moment because a lot of people are asking i'm going to show my dog he is sleeping over there ah uh, now look look this is is he this now but he he doesn't care he's uh, he's about 7 years old now 7 ah. and a half yeah he's a old boy now and he's uh, we have to be very worried about him because he's slightly under the weather so we mm. have to get the right yeah so and we are under lockdown over here so we have to be careful with our uh, vet and all like uh, you uh, are you allowed to take the dog to the vet if there something happens to him and all i think so i'm not 100% sure but i think you may need to call and make an appointment um i mean they they given prov provisions to walk the dog so uh -huh. i think they understand the importance um of the dog staying healthy so i would think that there would be something in place for uh -huh. the dogs to be um treated for by the vet yeah the, well you know we are, we are we're all you know the situations are changing every day now especially mm -hmm. over in india so the, the you know the jury is out right now on this so we are waiting hopefully everything will be fine and nobody really needs to go to the vet but uh, we were able to go a couple of days before uh, like a few days before to just to get him tested so these things are changing as we know and all that uh, do you go, when you go out do you wear like a mask or something or is there any special precaution you take when you take her out for a walk um no not really i just try to be responsible um because i've seen a few people with masks um cloth masks um and just looking at some of them you can tell they're not surgical quality um yeah. and they're not really doing a purpose serving a purpose other than your ego or your um your mind really so i mean yeah. if i'm not going to get the quality that would protect me from the virus then just be safe social yeah. distancing um yeah. not shaking hands that sort of stuff so we still have chats and stuff but you respect each other's space um you respect the virus um uh -huh. yeah i try to stay at home so the only time we venture out is to take nala for a walk um yeah. or to go to the supermarket for groceries fortunately yeah. for us we've had a few good days um of weather this week so we've been able to get the the um the mat out um pull the grill out do some grilling on the on the grill and be able to lay down on the the lawn in the garden and just chill but even without that you know just be responsible if you can afford a a mask or can't find a mask of good quality it makes no sense putting a mask on just putting it on say 
There's even a video yeah. on the internet about a lady showing how you can cross terminate by wearing gloves. So you just need to uh -huh. be responsible. You don't need to panic, um, whether that's buying in a supermarket or drastically changing how you behave. Just you should have been yeah. hygienic before coronavirus. So just continue good hygiene. I, I completely agree with you, uh, Carlos. I think this is fantastic advice for everybody to follow. Uh, you know, I uh, when I take my dog out, it's a very small walk in the evenings. When I do take him out to do his business or for a walk, I kind of refrain from other people coming and petting him or coming close mm -hmm. to them. We maintain our distance from other people. Uh, the dog needs to go out, even though it's a very small patch that we can take him out to. So we don't let a lot of people come next to him, even though he's very friendly. So, and you know, Pasha, my dog's name is Pasha. And oh, he's okay. wondering, uh, Pasha, keeps, Pasha keeps wondering uh, why, hey, all these guys have come here to meet me. Why aren't you letting them meet me? <laughs> but, Especially you know, because they used to before. Yeah, they did. They, and, they, and, they, and he's quite popular. So uh, uh, he thinks that I'm being very evil. But you know, it's, 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 the, it's, the, it's the need of the hour. Yeah. And it, it is what we have to do right now. Uh, we have no, uh, we have no other thing. It's just we have to make best this situation that we're in right now, and maybe we can come out with some learning experiences. Uh, Carlos, you have taken a lot of time for us. We are really thankful for doing this. Uh, we really, you know, please, guys, uh, for people who have just joined us, please go look at Carlos's uh, uh, charitable cancer Char uh, foundation. Uh, it is uh, uh, Project Ricky Foundation. Uh, please check out uh, his dog's page. Uh, it is, uh, let me just read it out. I have it written, Nala Brathwaite. We're going to oh. have it in the description. Yes, and I'll please, post both the pages. Yes, we have put that in. And I think Rick, uh, Carlos just typed it in. Thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, do you have anything uh, to say to us? We are very looking forward to having you. I think the IPL will be held eventually. So mm -hmm. uh, you will be here for that. And... Uh, uh, you will be playing for, uh, if I'm not uh, mistaken. So I wasn't, I wasn't drafted this year. Um, uh -huh. So hopefully I'd be there in some capacity, um, uh -huh. rather as a replacement, doing commentary, um, yeah. punditry, something. Um, having been there for the last four years, I don't know if I can manage missing the IPL this year. Um, so looking forward to being in India. Um, yeah. Hopefully it clears up, obviously. Um, Public health transcends cricket and sport. As much as we are missing it, we need to ensure that everyone is safe and that um, normal life, I don't think, would ever go back to being normal. It would definitely change. Um, but we want to resume some sort of normalcy. So if it means that cricketers have to um, stay away for a bit, then unfortunately that's what we'd have to do. But once normal service resumes, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting in India in some capacity and being a part of the IPL. We are very happy to have we we, are, we have some of the people that you may know. We do have some hard call here. We have uh, you, Raj, uh, you have uh, another one of your teammates, I believe, over here, and they have all been happy to come and see you uh, spend some of your time with us. Uh, thank you so much for uh, taking this time. Thanks for having uh, me. Man. Oh no, and please, when you come down, please uh, please send us a message. We have a lot of NGOs. We know we are going to send you that. Uh, some information so that you can have a look at that. We are really uh, very delighted that you are taking this, uh, make, you know, using your platform and trying to help out the strays and the lesser fortunate dogs out here. Uh, we really, uh, we have uh, wish you all the best in all your future endeavors. And uh, we are hoping to uh, see you over here soon. Uh, thank you guys for taking the time and watching uh, Car uh, Carlos. Do subscribe to his channel. on. Uh, yeah. All right, Nala. Thank you so much. A lot of love from all of us from India. And uh, please be safe. And uh, and uh, hope to see you too. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Guys.